Hello YouTubers, my name is Brian LaDuke and I have been making a lot of tutorial videos on Affinity Designer. However, I realized I was going a little too fast for people, so I decided to start a new video series that is a little more basic and a little less fast paced. Affinity is a powerful competitor to the Adobe Suite. It has an alternative to Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and it is coming out with an alternative to InDesign. The price in the US is only $50, it has free updates, and there is no monthly subscription. It was awarded Best App of the Mac App Store in 2015, and it got 5 stars by over 10,000 different reviewers. Affinity was originally only for Mac, but now there is also a Windows version. Each Affinity file can also be opened in all other Affinity applications, and Affinity shares a lot of similar file formats. This is what Affinity Designer looks like when you first launch the application, and you can customize the workspace. You can click in these tabs which are called Studios and click and drag them out and then you can put them in other tabs. You can even uh, dock them on the left side if you want. And right now we have only one row of tools but I want to have two rows. So go to View and Customize Tools. And there's a little sneaky catch right here, the Cat Tool. And I'm going to go to Two. I want to have two rows here. So while the move tool is selected and nothing else on the screen is selected, you can go to preferences through the context toolbar, or you could or through Mac you can go to Affinity Designer and Preferences. And then for Windows, you would go to Edit and then Preferences. So while the move tool is selected, I'm gonna click on Preferences and then this is the screen that you would come to and then we're going to go to user interface and then under here where it says UI style I'm going to select light and I like the way this looks better some people prefer dark some people prefer light I prefer light and I'm going to just move some of these um, studios around this is the interface that I will be working with if there is a studio that you do not see here, then just go to View, Studio, and then all of your studios will be right here. You will also notice that there is no undo and redo command other than through the edit menu, but you can undo and redo through the history panel. And something else that I will let you know is you can change your key commands through the preferences. So again, if we go to preferences and then go into keyboard shortcuts, the undo and redo would be in the edit menu. So you go to edit and you'll see here I have the common control Z and control Y for edit for undo and redo. But by default, the redo would be um, command shift Z. I think I accidentally said control. I meant to say command because I'm on Mac. Alright, so let's walk you through the interface. These are the tools here and your options up here will change depending on the tool you select. Up here is the main toolbar and different options will be highlighted depending on what you have selected. This up here is your order. So if I select this it is currently in the back and I want to set it to the front so I'm going to just click move to front or move to back and then this is in between move a little more forward and then I can move it a little more forward and this is um, flip horizontal flip vertical rotate counterclockwise or rotate clockwise this is your alignment. These are your different snapping options. Right now I have snapping turned on. And you have additional snapping options here. You don't need to know all of this. This is just letting you know that all of the your common tools are right here on the interface. And if I select multiple tools at once, 
these are kind of like illustrators pathfinders these are what are called boolean operations or I think I pronounced that right so with these two selected I could add subtract intersect divide and combine and then this these options over here is um, where you paste your objects so if I cut this command X and then have this selected it will insert behind everything else I'm gonna paste and then I'll cut it again have this one selected it will paste in front and then with this selected it will paste inside so but first I need to select this object and make sure this is selected and now you'll see it pasted inside the shape now all this is in the draw persona these different tabs up here are called personas so this is the draw persona this is the pixel persona you where you can use a lot of pixel tools I won't be going over that too much in this video and then this is the export export persona which is um, your different exporting options so you don't have to export each layer individually you can um, export them all at once in this persona before moving to the next section of this video I wanna cover one last thing in Illustrator you are probably aware that once you make a selection bounding box only over a partial a section of your object is that it selects in designer you have to uh, make a bounding box over the whole selection of over the whole object in order for it to select however if you want to use the illustrator approach then go into preferences tools and then have this option checked off select object when intersects with select marquee Something that confuses a lot of newcomers, including myself, when I first started using Affinity Designer, is the layer functionality. When I draw each stroke, you'll see a new layer is created each time I do that. But if you come from Adobe Illustrator, you'll probably realize that each curve is nested within the layer. And if you look in at what is in parentheses, you'll notice that these are curves. So I'm going to create a new uh, vector layer. You can create vector layers or pixel layers. And now in parentheses you will see it says layer and there is also a blue underline letting you know that it is a layer. So if I select this curve and hold shift to select multiple then I can bring these into the layer and now anything I draw will be nested within that layer. Oh, and you can click on this arrow to expand your layers, of course. When you want to bring a curve inside a layer, be careful that you do not accidentally bring it inside another curve. Because see how that disappeared? This is the same as pasting inside, which I showed you earlier, which is the same as clipping. So if I bring this over here, and then bring this inside this circle, you'll see I just clipped it. And I can take it out by bringing it back out. When you're bringing a curve inside a layer, you'll see that right now it is indented. That means you, I'm putting the curve inside the layer. But if the blue highlight is um, like this, then I'll just bring it below the layer. So make sure that that blue is indented. Now if you want to create a group, then you can select multiple objects and press Command G for Mac or Control G for Windows, or you go up here to Layer and then Group. And now you see, once I select one object, I select all of these because these were the objects I put into the group. If I want to take one of these objects out, so I'll I'll just click on one and then bring it out. And you'll notice that once I select a layer, it gets selected on the actual um, document. 
Now I'm going to bring this back into the group. And now if I want to select um, an individual object within the group without having to open the group and select layers that, uh, objects that way, I'm going to hold Command for Mac or Control for Windows and then just select one. And then once you uh, select one, you can select another without having to press Command or Control again. But once you click off, you will have to do it again. And this is the same for clipping. So if I remove this group and I put one of these objects clipped inside another, then I'll just hold Command for Mac or Control for Windows, and then I can select it again without having to open my layers. Take it back out. And now, let's say that, that I have all these circles um, behind each other, and I want to select this very last one without having to go into the layers. So I'm going to just hold Alt, click, click again, and click again. And I was holding Alt the entire time. And now I select, selected the one that was furthest in the back. So just hold Alt to click on um, a stack order. And this is, and the Alt option is for both Mac and Windows. New to Affinity Designer 1.6 is once you select an object, it opens that location in your layers uh, panel. If you'd rather not have that happen, then you can go to the preferences and then go to user interface. And then down here where it says auto scroll to show selection in layers panel, I'm going to uncheck this. Although I believe it says something differently for Windows. But this is how you would do that. And now if I select an object, it does not open that location, the layers panel. However, if I do select something and then right click and then say find in layers panel, then it will do that. I am running out of time, so I'll have to stop the video here. This opening video will be in two parts, part A and part B. And part B will be on vector editing, uh, masking and pixel editing and then after that the next video in the playlist will be on an easy way to create drawings meanwhile I will also be updating the affinity designer tips and tricks playlist so stay informed and I hope this is helpful to you